Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Current. Thank you for tuning in this lovely Sunday morning. Well, well it's lovely here anyway. I, I hope it's lovely wherever you are uh, throughout the world today as well. Thank you for choosing to begin your week with us in this small spiritual community. Let's begin, as we normally do, with a moment called tuning. This is an opportunity for us to quite literally feel the presence of God flowing through us. Imagine yourself as a tuning fork and that you are being vibrated by the very being of God. And even more than that, you are vibrating within the being of God as well. Let's take a few moments to tune ourselves in to the presence of God. Staying in this space, let's join our voices together in John Philip Newell's Prayer of Awareness. 
It is in the depths of life that we find you at the heart of this moment, at the center of our soul, deep in the earth and its eternal stirrings. You are the ground of all being, the wellspring of time, womb of the earth, the seed force of stars. And so, at the opening of this day, we wait, not for blessings from afar, but for you, the very soil of our soul, the early freshness of morning, the first breath of day. Amen. Well, folks, I, I've placed a lot of different spiritual labels on myself throughout the years. Jew, Buddhist, Taoist, New Ageist, Christian, post-Christian. Am I even a Christian? I don't know. They're all labels. But between my teens and 20s, I called myself an agnostic. Mainly because I didn't believe in the sort of God everyone around me talked about. A God of wrath and vengeance, whose demand for strict adherence to some truly archaic rules made God seem more like a petulant child than the one consciousness of all reality. I mean, really? Don't eat lobster? Only someone who never ate lobster would make that law. Although I have to say, uh, someone, probably my Jewish mother, once tried to explain to me that the ancient shellfish restrictions were because it was easy to die from eating spoiled or rotten shellfish in the biblical era. But uh, I'm sorry, even 3,000 years ago, Jews knew how to boil a lobster. Anyway, partially because of the lobster thing, but mostly because I vehemently deny the existence of a God who acts and looks and needs an ego stroking just like humans, I agree with Nietzsche who wrote, I cannot believe in a God who wants to be praised all the time. Nietzsche and I rebel against a particular form of Christianity we today generally describe as evangelical. The use of evangelical Christian language is all over the media these days, exacerbating a centuries-old issue caused by biblical literalism, racism, and miseducation. It's an unfortunate turn of events because the, ideolo the ideologies 
evangelicals and other fundamentalists shill have nothing to do with Jesus, who promoted universal care for one another, regardless of religion, by the way. Jesus would have no understanding of the evangelical idea that all people must be saved through Christ because Jesus knew that God needs religion about as much as God desires praise. Which is to say, not so much. It took decades for me to understand that there were legitimate alternatives to the evangelical idea of praise because once I got past the general revulsion of an overly egoic God, I started to honestly ask, what does it mean to praise God? And more importantly, why do we feel the need to shower God with praise? And as is often the case, our ancestors wondered the same thing. The Psalms, especially the praise Psalms, indicate that praise is a response to God's love not an act of fealty to a megalomaniacal God insisting on continual adoration. Let's read Psalm 146, for example. Praise the Lord. Let my whole being praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. Don't trust leaders. Don't trust any human beings. There's no saving help with them. Their breath leaves them, then they go back to the ground. On that very same day, their plans die too. The person whose help is the God of Jacob, the person whose hope rests on the Lord their God, is truly happy. God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and all that's in them. God, who is faithful forever, who gives justice to people who are oppressed, who gives bread to people who are starving. The Lord, who frees prisoners. The Lord, who makes the blind see. The Lord, who straightens up those who are bent low. The Lord, who loves the righteous. The Lord, who protects immigrants, who helps orphans and widows, but who makes the way of the wicked twist and turn. The Lord will rule forever. Zion, your God will rule from one generation to the next. Praise the Lord. There are very few, if any, passages in the Bible that are directly about God demanding praise, at least for the sake of praise itself. Instead, praise in Scripture is almost always about an organic response from the created to the Creator. We praise God because we're buzzed about living, not because God threatens us. Furthermore, praise doesn't have to be a conscious activity like a song, a prayer, or a ritual sacrifice. Simply being is itself praise to God. Being aware is even more powerful. And I think that's a pretty astounding concept. Being is itself praise to God. Praising God doesn't require temples, or churches, or music, or prayer, or meditation, or even enlightenment. All of those things might enhance our journey toward a conscious, awakened experience of God, but they're not required for our spiritual development any more than God requires or needs praise. Psalm 146 and the other 20 or so praise psalms all describe worship as a natural response from love, through love, to love, in love. An infinite loop of creation, creating creatures who create. We should begin to conceive of praise from an understanding that this present physical life is not ultimate reality, but is merely a reality. One of a trillion probabilities all happening simultaneously. There is no real creator and created as separate entities. We're mistaken to think of God and us. That leads us to believe we must praise and appease an external presence. Instead, we shouldn't think of God, the creator, as separate from us, the created. That is not the way the universe is assembled, certainly not at a quantum level. 
nor is it the way our most ancient, wonder-filled sense of God, so elegantly described in the Psalms, is portrayed. Creation is happening all the time. We're creating right now. No future is written except by we, the authors. We faithful few. The body of God. God moves among us and around us, from within us, as the soul of our being, as the soul of all being. Praise God, from whom all realities flow. Praising God as the fundamental construct of all being is not the egotistical demand of a petulant God, but the way we sentient beings recognize the expansiveness of God's loving creativity. The psalmists realize we live with an always expanding comprehension of reality, an honest, soul-shaking response to the astounding beauty and overwhelming scale of our small slice of the metaverse ignites the knowledge in us that we are part of, not separate from, God's all-encompassing beauty. Everything is praise to God because everything is of God. Praising creation is intrinsic to the nature of being because all beings are part and parcel, the being of God. C.S. Lewis, in his reflection on the praise psalms, wrote, The most obvious fact about praise, whether of God or anything, strangely escaped me. I thought of it in terms of compliment, approval, or the giving of honor. I'd never noticed that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise, unless, of course, shyness, or the fear of boring others is deliberately brought in to check it. The world rings with praise. Lovers praising one another, readers their favorite poet, walkers praising the countryside, players praising their favorite game. Praise of weather, wines, dishes, movies, cars, horses, colleges, countries, historical people, children, flowers, mountains, rare stamps, rare beetles, even sometimes politicians or scholars, except where intolerably adverse circumstances interfere, praise almost seems to be inner, inner health made audible. Or in the words of our psalmist, I will praise the Lord with all my life. May God make it so. Our question today is uh, just a discussion about your praise practices. What are your praise practices? How have you viewed praise throughout the course of your spiritual journey? And uh, what works for you today? I'll send you into breakout rooms for 10 or 11 minutes. If you'd like to take the first part of the breakout room to, um, excuse me, to uh, check in with each other and, and see how you're doing, that would be great. I'll give you a couple of extra minutes to do that. Please accept the invitations on your screen, and we'll see you back here for general discussion in about 10 minutes. You know, the uh, indigenous people around the world seem to have had an intrinsic understanding of their connection, not only to the earth, but really to the entire cosmos. And I think that by the time Jesus came along, at least in, in that part of the world, a lot of that connection had been lost. And, and there are a variety of reasons for that. But I, I think that a large part of Jesus' ministry is spent trying to remind people about their connection. Their connection to the planet, their connection to God. And, and I think most important to Jesus is our connection to one another. Uh, I, in all of his preaching, I see him primarily concerned with the way we take care of each other. And in his opinion, we would take better care of each other if we could see God in each other, if we could have this more expanded view of the universe that he has. His view is so expansive, in fact, that he asks us to see God in everything. So after he spends the last Passover night with his disciples and probably his family and, and friends in the, in the upper room, he asks them to remember that God is even in 
the inanimate objects that are around us, including, for example, a leftover piece of bread after the feast. Jesus takes this piece of bread, normally just a piece of bread, something we'd maybe eat without concern, and says, listen, from now on, when you pick up a piece of bread like this, realize that's God. There's God in this. In fact, let this piece of bread represent the body of God. So when you eat a piece of bread, don't just eat it. Think about how it connects you to the body of God. So will you join me now? in doing as Jesus asks and remembering that this body is God's body and that it's meant to be shared by every single one of us. Let's share the body of God now. In a similar manner, Jesus took a cup and gave thanks for it. And he passed it around his disciples and, and said, Listen, every time from now on you drink any liquid, remember that this also embodies God. In fact, think of all liquids as the blood of God, invigorating the life of the universe, connecting us, enlivening us, joining us all together with love. Think of this liquid as God's love flowing unconditionally throughout the universe. Will you join me now in taking in the very love of God? Let's pray. Glorious, soul-filling Lord of all being, as does this bread and this juice, as it fills our physicality, may you fill the soul of our being so that we might find in you oneness and wholeness with you and through you to every other person we meet, to every other person we don't even know. Let your love fill us and flow through us to the entire being of the universe. We pray in all of your names and images, but especially in the name of Jesus Christ, whose way of being and teachings we try to follow our best. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for communing here today with uh, all of us together. I uh, appreciate all of the energy and thought and, uh, and questioning and everything that you all bring to service every week. It really is reinvigorating for the beginning of the week. Um, just to revisit our mission moment, uh, this month we're supporting um, the uh, Adopt a Native Elder uh, charity. And if you would like to give to that, all you have to do is go to the website and click on any of the PayPal buttons anywhere on the website. Once you click the PayPal button, you'll get a choice to either give to our uh, outreach, our mission and ministry moment, or to the general operating funds. Thank you all for your generous donations to both our ongoing outreach uh, and, um, and to the operating funds of The Current so that we can continue uh, to meet and uh, expand our conversation of love and equity to the world as well. We'll continue this conversation this Wednesday at noon right here on this same channel every Wednesday uh, from noon to one. We'll expand on the things that we talked about, praise and God, and, and I'm sure new topics will come up as well. It's a different conversation if you'd like to just... Uh, hop in with some lunch or some snacks. Please tune in Wednesday at noon and let your friends know about it as well. Also, Wednesdays at four, meditation at four with the with the Blairs, a chance to recenter and uh, repurpose and retune uh, midweek. If you'd like to join us for that, please just send Hugh an email and thank you for your continued hosting uh, of that. Hugh puts together a, a great meditation service uh, with readings, and we've been studying a Thich Nhat Hanh book. Uh, it's excellent. I recommend it highly. So please tell your friends about that as well and help to have them tune in. And then, of course, I hope to see you back here next Sunday at 9 o'clock for our current events discussion or 10.15 for this God Connect service, which would not work without your interaction and presence. So thank you all for being here.
don't forget to send people to our YouTube channel. We tend to get a lot of activity uh, from that, and it uh, allows people to see what we do here. The sermons usually get posted by Monday afternoon with snippets of church as well. So anybody who has questions about who we are or what we do, um, have them get in touch with me. I'm happy to talk to people, but also send them to the YouTube channel. They can get a good idea of what's going on. We had about 7,200 uh, views on Facebook this week, uh, almost 800 interactions, and I had about 50 direct interactions with people through Facebook asking about us. And I've got those all, I've got those set up as automations, by the way, now, so I don't like actually have to write the same thing to people all the time. It's because they often ask where we meet and what we're about. Um, so I'm writing them to the YouTube channel and things like that, too. And I think, you know, you've seen we've started to get some curiosity seekers, at least. So it's been interesting. Thank you for continuing to promote the current. Um, anybody who would like to volunteer, especially for communion, I would love to see some of you uh, host communion and, and offer it to the community as well. Please just send me an email or a text and, and let me know when you'd like to go or if you'd like some help with that. I'm happy to help you with that. I'll talk, all right, Susan, let's talk about it. We'll talk about it this week. And, uh, and I'll, get you, I'll get you set up. It'd be lovely. Communion is something we should all be able to offer because we are all in communion with God all the time. So thanks for your consideration there as well. All right, let's close once again in prayer. And then we have a new uh, song that we finally finished uh, sort of recording and mixing uh, with which to go out on. So I hope you all like it. Let's pray. This blessing takes one look at you, and all it can say is holy. Holy hands, holy face, holy feet, holy everything in between. Holy even in pain, holy even when weary, in brokenness, holy. In shame, holy still. Holy in delight, holy in distress, holy when being born. Holy when we lay it down at the hour of our death. So, friend, open your eyes, holy eyes. For one moment, see what this blessing sees. This blessing that knows how you have been formed and knit together in wonder and love. Welcome this blessing that folds its hands in prayer when it meets you. Receive this blessing that wants to kneel in reverence before you, you who are temple, sanctuary, home for God in this world. Amen. Travels on, one day rolls to the next. Barely looking back at the ground we've covered. Into the great unknown, journey with me. Mysteries ours to discover. We are just passing by. Lives intertwine for this moment in time. In the frenzy, pieces flowing against the odds, hope.
for this time For what's gone before What lies ahead that we cannot see Love gained, love lost Bridges burned, paths crossed A journey that soars into the great unknown Praise God there's life beyond What we can imagine What we can see Praise God for the gifts we're given what we can share, all we can be. Praise God for the mountains we planted, endless deserts, raging seas. Praise God for the peace I found in this journey with you. God speed your weeks, my friends. May God's love and light shine through you so profusely that it affects everyone you meet with positive joy and love. Peace. See you next week. Or Wednesday. Or any other time that you want to get together. Just let me know.